So we tend to believe information that conforms with what we already know. It just feels right. So it just feels right. It feels really weird when people put up statistics that look wrong and yet they are kind of right. We accept majority opinion. So if everyone else says that, we tend to think, well, we'll go with that. You know, ask the crowd. If the crowd says yes, they can't all be wrong. We're not very intuitive with numbers. So when I say to you, you know, percentage here or this or that, people get kind of confused there. They're not terribly intuitive with that. And we tend to focus on negative information. That point you made. We're very sensitive to something being a negative. If it looks like it's going to cost us, we'll pay a lot more attention to that than we would otherwise. If you think and about uh, a guy actually was given it the job in World War II to study where aircraft were damaged in, uh, in firefights. And he studied the aircraft as they were coming in and he found most of the damage that was being done was on the wings and was on, you know, on other parts of the fuselage. And uh, so he concluded that we'll put all the armour plating where? So all the damage that he was seeing on these planes was on the wings and other parts of the fuselage, you know, whatever. Where are you going to put the armour plating? Exactly. Why is that? Those planes didn't come back. So you don't say that. And, and he had to fight the case because the planes that came back were the survivors. You don't go putting armour plating where you don't need it. The planes that, that, that hit the drink were the planes that were shot in the, uh, in the cockpit or in the engines. And that's where you needed the armour plating. So that's the value of survivorship bias. Okay. So the fast thinking reality. When it comes to thinking, we tend to be a bit lazy. We tend to look for the fast answers. We tend to think about the first thing that comes into our minds. More likely to believe a saying simply because it rhymes or because the finding or the findings of a report um, because we can remember the name of the person. And there's no doubt about that. You will tend to look for information because you can remember the name rather than whether or not it's the right information. We tend to answer with the first idea that comes into our heads. And you know what? We're not, we're not wrong. We're likely to be wrong. We're not going to be wrong with our group because the group is probably going to do exactly the same thing and they're going to come with, up with an answer that's not necessarily that dissimilar from ours. We're going to be equally wrong in the same direction. Most of the time we get away with it because most other people are wrong. You know what I mean? So it kind of feels okay. But we have to know, we really have to know when being right really matters. Okay? And okay, just a quick reflection. It's, it is an ethical issue. There is a big, strong ethical part about this. Trying to remove the amount of bias that we used to be quite used to is, a, is an ethical issue. Um, it's not just sufficient to be aware of it. You have to know the reason for your bias and you have to mitigate it. If you know you always have a particular bias, you're going to go in a certain direction, mitigate it. Have people around you who think differently. Some organisations even just nominate a person to be in the room to be the voice of dissent, you know, to be that person who always says, well, what if, you know, the gadfly, the, uh, the you know, the fifth column, um, the person who, who says, look, look at this a different way, just so that you avoid groupthink.